Hello faithful viewers and welcome back to another Transformers review. This time we are looking at the actual proper version of the Last Night Voyager class Optimus Prime. Yes, previously on the channel we have had a look at an upscaled KO version of this guy, but now finally, thanks to TF Nation, I've found the legitimate Voyager class figure. And boy oh boy, is he great. Now, Prime here turns into the Western Star truck that he adopted in Age of Extinction and The Last Night, and I do like it quite a lot. It isn't anything compared to the Peterbilt truck that is infamous from the first three films, but it's still a decent vehicle mode as it is. As always, he retains the red and blue flame kind of thing going on here. It looks very nice. He's very nicely painted all over. Some beautiful silver running across the top of the cab here and the grills there's like a molded autopot symbol on there and then blue runs all along the back you've got this light gray here uh, you've even got the sword holster visible there and you've got the shield which you can attach onto the trailer hitch so that's some good storage you flip him over to the underside and there is storage for his sword blade there as well which is awesome it is a uh, a non-accurate orange in terms of a blade colour, probably meant to symbolise it being superheated. It's fine, but uh, this is, that's actually a case of where the KO is actually nicer in terms of deco. There is another case which we'll show later, uh, but I do prefer the KO's colour scheme of a weapon because it's more like the Takara version. The orange here, it's fine, but it's not accurate. But I do like this weapon storage though, it's very clever. Prime rolls very decently. Uh, not all of the wheels touch the floor, unfortunately but that just might be because of the way that I've transformed him so that could be my fault some nice autopot symbols on either side of the top of the cab there and overall it is an excellent vehicle mode it feels very nice it looks very nice very good so let's get on to transformation of this optimus it is exactly the same as the KO upscale but it works a lot better for the voyager class it was made for this scale of a figure and the ko suffers for trying to recreate this so first thing we want to be doing is taking these weapons off let's just get rid of the shield there and then let's just pull out the sword which attaches very securely onto the underside of the truck like that Start by ripping that off and just flaring it out and out of the way. Just just get it out of the way or else it'll get in the way of everything that you're trying to do here. Then unclip these and get them like that and we'll tidy all of that up again in a moment. Then coming to the front of the cab here, we just want to be detaching all of this. Split it lengthways like that and then split these off and split these off and just fan when you get the feet out of that little groove there fan all of these out and to the back like that and then you can bend all of this down and these will be the legs take this little skirt piece here and fold that flat there and then just finishing up on the back here if we take these panels then we can fold them like that and like that and then we can take this backpack thing and try and slot it in on the back there are a couple of tabs on these pieces which slot into places on this backpack so it's just a case of trying to line it up correctly continuing on with the legs here we are going to rotate him 180 degrees at the waist and then we're just going to disconnect these pieces here and rotate the trailer hitches to the other side of the legs like that and then we can actually take these and rotate them this way now this was a thing that the ko couldn't do because if you tried to rotate them that way the legs would fall off so you had to rotate them a bizarre way around just to achieve this now with these parts of the front of the trucks we can disconnect the feet from the back here and bring them forward like that and then rotate them 180 degrees and tap them in to the bottoms of the shins like that so the same thing on this side let's rotate that there and let's just plug it in like that and then we're going to take this specifically the grill we're going to bring it down and all the way around like that and then we're just going to bring them and tap them into the sides of the legs making sure that the hinges on the back are the right ray and there you go that's one leg done it's the second verse same as the first we're going to rotate this grill piece in like that and then we're just going to bring this hinge it all, it's all on a ball joint and a hinge system and just make sure it's all plugged in like that. And look how fluid and easy that is compared to the KO, which is just a mess. 
When we're almost there with the figure, I'm just going to get him stood up and then we're just going to move the arms out of the way like that. We're going to bring them down and then we're going to take these hood pieces and just push them back up until they tab into the backs of the forearms like that. We're going to take the shoulder pads, we're going to disconnect them, we're going to rotate them round and just have them hanging in the correct way and that one's already done it. Then we're going to take the head, we're going to move it up like so, we're going to take the chest piece, we're going to fold it in until it all wants to tap into place, it would help if we didn't get caught on his chin and then finally we're going to take his pecs and we're just going to rotate them up like that. Just re-tapping this backpack because it's coming a bit loose, like so. And there we go. That is Optimus Prime from Age of Extinction and The Last Night, fully transformed into a beautiful looking robot mode. This mold is legitimately the best interpretation of this Optimus Prime design that we've ever gotten and probably ever will get. It stands to see if the studio series will release a version of this Optimus. They could well do. But how they're going to top this specific figure, I don't quite know, because this is a damn good representation of that version of Optimus Prime. Now, in terms of paint deco, the KO is actually slightly superior because, as I said before, it is based off the Takara version, and it is most noticeable in the chest area here. Unlike the KO, this is not accurate to the films. It's just this unsightly blue and red thing here. The KO has the actual flame deco present on the chest. So it's a bit unfortunate that the official Hasbro release suffers here. And once again, it's an example of a Takara version having a superior paint job. I don't know if that's still a thing anymore, though. I think both companies have to now have the same amount of detail but don't quote me on that because i could be completely wrong now if we continue in and have a look at the greater details optimus's head it is quite nicely detailed it's not painted to the best degree in the world either to be honest only the central part of the face plate they've bothered to paint with the edges unfortunately morphing into the blue that constitutes the rest of his head and plus his eyes are just a little bit too big and lacking in detail but other than that it's passable uh, as i said the chest i mean it is nicely painted over all the chest but it is just lacking that intricate detail that its uh, compatriot versions have but there is still some nice blue running along the forearms with lovely silver there in the abs uh, the skirt piece is painted quite nicely it's a shame that the sides of the skirt pieces aren't painted blue and then continuing to pan down we have nice silver shins and just very good sculpting all around it is impressive what they do to get an actual decent looking figure considering that the character model is so peculiar in the fact that it has basically no vehicle kibble hanging off it it's got to go somewhere and they're doing a very good job with this interpretation the age of extinction figures do not do this very well and they have these big clunky pieces hanging in un godly places all over whilst this version it has nice small compact shoulders Yes, there is the hood of the cab just hanging on the back there. And then you've got these pieces here just hanging off the backs of the legs. But certainly from the front angle, he looks very clean and tidy indeed. And they did the best they could. And I must commend them for that. So we've already had a look at the accessories. So we'll just briefly go over what you can do with them again. So the shield can plug into either forearm. For um, accuracy, let's plug it into his left arm here. Just slap that bad boy in. And uh, yeah, again, like the color of this, I don't particularly like. I think in the film, it was a silver and red combination. We've gone for this Energon blue thing here for the figure. And even the KO has this. So it's a little bit disappointing. In terms of his swords, he can hold it like that, which is a good look. And then he does have that weapon storage. We noted that sheath earlier on his back. So if we just pop this in here, it can just plug in and be very nice and secure. And that is very nice indeed. It blends in very well with the smokestacks that are on his back. So very good. It's just a shame that you can't plug the shield into his back. That would just have been an extra nice detail. But alas, it is very good. In terms of articulation, Optimus's head can rotate. It can flick off. 
As you can see, it's a ball joint that his head attaches onto, and it must not be a very secure ball joint considering how easily that came off. So let's just plug that in. It goes back in very easily. So you can rotate his head only about that way, very gently, and about that way, very gently. He can look up about that far and look down only about that far. In terms of the shoulders, they are on ball joints too, so you've got 360 degrees of rotation that way. And he can move his arm out that far as well with the shoulder pad moving to accommodate that stretch. He has a mushroom peg rotation of 360 degrees there. He's got a 90 degree bend at the elbow, nothing at the fists, unfortunately. He has no ab crunch. He has waist swivel. Uh, it is capable of 360 degrees, but because it's in robot mode and because I've got his sword in, he can only rotate that much currently, but he is capable of far much more. In terms of a forward kick, beautiful. In terms of a back kick, realistic enough in terms of a spread i'm only going to show it on the one leg but he does have a beautiful spread in terms of upper leg rotation he has a mushroom peg for the ko it would have fallen off by now but he's got 360 degrees thank you official version you are beautiful in terms of a knee bend it is under 90 degrees because of all of the kibble that he's got on the back here so that's a bit disappointing unfortunately and in terms of the feet he doesn't really have anything because they're locked into place here overall articulation is passable in fact i'll go so far as to say it is good it's just hindered because of obvious things but still it's better than the ko in terms of size comparisons here is our last night voyager optimus with the studio series optimus prime this is the uh, ko version of that an extraordinarily good ko mind you and it's the first optimus prime mold that was released for studio series he is shorter than the last night figure but that's how they look together. Here he is with Evasion Mode Optimus Prime from Age of Extinction, one of the only good Age of Extinction figures out there. They are almost the same size, but the Last Knight figure is slightly taller in terms of head height. Oh, how it's good to have these two together at last. So we've got both Last Night Voyagers here. We've got Optimus and Megatron. And look how good they look together. Megatron is the superior figure overall, but this Optimus is damn good and now i do have all three last night voyagers now hound here is a knockoff and here's another example of being an extraordinarily good knockoff but i've got the trio of voyagers together at least i would say hound is probably the weakest of the three ultimus is still great but hound is still great as well but that's how they look together but this is the comparison we're all interested in big ko over here on the right and the smaller official Optimus on the left. So you can see what I mean about the detail thing here on the chest, the flames on this guy. This guy, for all of his issues, overall has the better paint than the official version, plus he's got the die cast metal. But guy on the left is a thousand times better just in terms of quality control. And that, trust me, makes all the difference. And then last, but certainly not least, here is Mysterio with Optimus Prime. To transform Optimus back into his vehicle mode, what we want to be doing is starting with his chest area. So if we just disconnect the arms ever so slightly, we might be able to then get our fingers in and disconnect his chest piece. But it is a little bit tricky to do at the angle that I'm currently sitting in, so far away from the figure. But there we go, we can pull that away like that and also take his pecs and just bring them down like that and then get his head and push it all the way in. We're going to leave that flat and extended out. Coming to his arms, we're going to rotate them and take the shoulder pads and just rotate them outward and tap them in to little points on there. Same thing on this one. Just going to rotate that round, make sure that is tapped in correctly. Difficult to see, I know, but trust me, there's a tap right there. Just tap them out like that. Then bring these panels on his forearms and shift them forward over his fist, or fists, I should say. And then just try to connect these just like that. Well, almost there. A little bit fiddly, a little bit fiddly, I must admit. Stuff like that. We're just going to leave all of that like that. And then we're going to turn our attention down to his lower torso. So spin him 180 out of the waist. Let's just shift all of this out of the way. Just flare it all out. And then looking at his feet, we're just going to disconnect 
methodically something. <laughs> Disconnect that, that bit there on each leg, just like that, and have them hanging out of the way. We're going to spin the grill pieces outwards and into place, like so, on either side. And then we're going to rotate the legs inwards, just at those mushroom pegs. Disconnect the feet if they want to do it. Yep, yeah, there we go. So all of this bit starts to hang outward like that. But we're just going to keep attention here for a second and then take these light grey pieces and rotate them like so. And then you can connect his legs at those points just like that. Let's bend him at the upper legs. Just making sure none of this gets caught on everything. So you've got it like that. And then we're just going to continue to spin these bits round to the front. Let's rotate these bits round so that the feet are on the inside and then we can flatten them like that and they will tab in to convenient ports that are right there. Just like that. And then rotate these bits so they are just like that. It's the same thing on this side, we're going to rotate it and we're just going to plug that in into the port just like so rotate this round the right way and then it's just a case of trying to attach everything these roof parts here well these bits i've disconnected they don't seem to tap together all that particularly well but we do eventually hold in place when you've got basically everything else in place so let's just try and get them back into position and get them tapped into these bits here. It might be a case of getting the sides tabbed in first. Keep that like that. And then... Connect these bits all together. And now that we've got that in place, let's just bring these side panels back round and make sure that they tab in nice and securely like so on either side. That bit's fighting me, but if we try and get this in now, just make sure it's all squeezed together, make sure it all tabs in place. Just there we go. And now that is Optimus fully transformed back into his Western Star vehicle mode. So that has been our look at the official Hasbro last night Voyager class Optimus Prime. I absolutely recommend this figure to you. He is so much fun and he is so much better overall than the knockoff version that we have looked at previously on the channel. Just the quality control issues of that upscale just detract so much from it compared to this guy. This guy, none of his things fall off apart from his head which you saw earlier, which was the first time that's ever happened and just complete accident. But it looks back in and that is very unlikely to happen if you're actually taking care of the figure. But overall, he, this guy is just so much fun to play with. He is a very easy transformation. He holds together. He looks really nice. Sure, the paint here and there is a little bit unfortunate, but it doesn't detract from the overall just godsend that this figure is. He is bare bones middle, I think, of the Voyager ranking from last night. Uh, Megatron being the best and Hound being the weakest. But uh, yeah, this guy is awesome. Definitely picking him up. I, I, I like him. I really like him. I'm so glad to actually have a proper one finally. I've wanted it for so many years and I'm so happy I finally got it. So that has been our look at Optimus Prime. Thank you so much everybody for stopping by and checking out this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and share this video around to help out the channel. And until the next time, see you all later.